uh, worship rally. Now we did it a little different than what they do in the decorations book, mostly because there was a lot of intricate, what we felt like was kind of intricate painting to do the backdrop the way they had designed it. So we're trying to kind of giving you a different option here so that you can see another way to do the same thing. So we use uh, blue panels for the, the sky in the background. And as we usually do, or always do, we reuse, we recycle as much as we possibly can. Those blue panels, this is probably their fourth uh, BBS that they've been in. <laughs> Uh, at least their third. They were certainly in uh, in the wild, and I believe we used them at least in one scene of concrete cranes, maybe, or something similar. Anyway, we used pardon? submerged. Submerged. That's right, because uh, some of them were scalloped on the other on the other end because they they were supposed to look like the waves. So uh, we used those as the sky. We added a cloud just to kind of break up the the scenery there. The mountains are, are cut out of two inch foam board. Um, a couple of those were recycled from, uh, which one was it? I can't remember which, which DBS it was that had the bear. Had the bear. Was that in the wild? That was in the wild. They're all starting to run together in my head because we have this room full of all these different parts. Um, <laughs> So part of those mountains are recycled from in the wild, the, the worship rally scene that had the big bear and the, the cub. The pillars uh, that are falling down there were telescopes from Galactic Star Bears. Uh, so we bought vinyl shelf wrap uh, that looks like marble and wrapped those with that uh, to give a semblance of, of columns that have fallen. We, because we're in a sandy area in this, this particular BBS, then we used uh, painter's canvas tarps for the floor uh, to give it the look of sand. Typically in an archaeological dig site, they dig a trench or dig an area out, and a lot of times they put string lines, or, or in this case I had that laser on a while ago, I turned it off a moment ago, but laser lines so that they can mark this is where this particular item came from or whatever in the dig site. Uh, so to simulate that pit that they would dig, we laid uh, carpet tubes underneath the canvas. Now two of the carpet tubes that are laying under there were the tree trunks from Journey off the map. Journey off the map. <laughs> she remembers them better than I do. Um, the other two tubes are the tubes that some of the, the, the big posters and stuff come in. So we laid those down, draped the fabric over it to make it kind of look like a depressed dig site. The tent is made from uh, PVC. I used a little smaller PVC because I had a bunch of it. This is three quarter inch. In the book, they, I think they used an inch and a quarter, which would probably work a little better, but I had this so to conserve expenses, I used that. Uh, we went to Joanne's and bought some fabric. Christy hemmed a tube on one end so it slips over the tube and then just hangs down the back to create a tent. The sawhorse, the table is made from a couple of sawhorses that we've used in multiple BBSs for different things. Uh, then there's just a, a random piece of two inch foam laying on top of it, a, a scrap from some some other BBS, and then we covered that with a tablecloth. And then we added a bunch of paraphernalia uh, from our closet, our closet, name of uh, numerous places, uh, just to add to the look. Uh, you'll see, uh, this is kind of interesting, this is different than Journey Off the Map or some of the others that we have done where you're trying to go back to that point in time when this happened, but you have to remember that this Destination Dig takes place today. We're actually excavating dig sites in Israel. 
And actually, these maps on these two, and some, uh, there's one available for one of the other schemes. <coughs> Those are actual maps of dig sites in Jerusalem today. So that, that kind of adds a modern uh, flair to it. But you'll see modern tools like the laser sight and a magnifying glass and another tripod over there. Uh, over here is an iPad um, and a, a little electric light thing. So there are modern twists to this as well, and you can incorporate any of those into your scenes because that's that's what's actually happening uh, today. The, if you come around to this scene, this is the Bible study scene. Uh, we built shells out of half inch, or yeah, half inch plastic tubing. Um, pieces of half-inch palm board from Colossal Coastal Ride, Colossal Coastal Ride, I think, uh, we cut out for the shelving. Those are just pushed together. They're not glued. They're not fastened, but they, they hold up for this. That way we can take them apart and reuse them and transport them. Same thing here for the table. It's a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, saw horses covered with a piece of a thick styrofoam left from something else, covered with cloth. We took some clay pots, broke some of them to make them look like artifacts that would have been found. Um, the crates that they would have on a dig site to box things up or bring in equipment or, or whatever, uh, those have been in a half a dozen different uh, BBSs. Uh, those are made with cardboard boxes and you glue a styrofoam to them and then you can use like a, a hot knife or something to, to create the grain in there and then you paint over them and, and make them look like wood. Uh, they're very lightweight of course. Then there's some other things, if, if you really look around very closely you'll see specific items from different BBSs that we've thrown in here. Here's a backpack from In the Wild, a jumpstart kit from uh, Journey Off the Map. There's another one over there. There's a backpack here from Journey Off the Map. So we kind of threw those in just to be kind of fun, but they fit with the theme. So you can use stuff like that all the time. The backdrop here is uh, four sheets of two-inch foam board. You could use half-inch foam board. And then because this is supposed to look like a tent, the inside of a tent, then we used masking tape to create what appears to be the seams in the fabric of the tent. Uh, that was easier, if you will, than painting all those stripes. Uh, but, it, but it gives you the same effect, and the curve kind of gives you an idea that the tent is curved. Um, if you'll notice, the archaeologists are using the same kind of uh, cabinets that they did in uh, Game On. Yeah, all the words slip my mind here. So we use reuse those because lockers are lockers, right? Then if you move over here, this is um, this was Bible study. This is crafts. So we built some shelving out of some plastic uh, PVC pipe, a couple of three panels for the backdrop, and then we took a large cardboard box that probably a flat screen TV came in, cut a couple of hole, cup holes in the bottom corners, and then cardboard tubes from carpet. Uh, you can usually get those tubes like at Lowe's where in the back where they have carpet. They'll give you the tubes because they just pile up back there in their, their building. Uh, cut those off and stick them in those holes and that made a neat little table easy to put up take down etc Back in the far corner is a cavern uh, Pieces from other VBS's as well uh, We really kind of visualize that's for for the music backdrop and We were kind of visualizing that that would be neat if you have a particular room where the kids go for music you could actually put that in front of the door and have them walk through that to get into music. You could hang a black cloth behind it to make it look dark and they'd have to open that to go into the music room or whatever, but that would give them kind of that concept of going into the cavern, the music cavern. Uh, the little pop-up tent just adds a little flair and some color to the scenery. 
Back in the far corner or the back of the room uh, is the mission market. The mission marketplace, I guess. Um, we lucked out because we had those panels with those arches from some play that, that our youth did uh, several years ago at our church. So fortunately we have a place that can restore those kinds of things and we were able to reuse those. The, uh, we just added anything we could think of and this is really supposed to represent as much as anything a market that you might see today in Jerusalem in one, on one of the little side streets or something. So there's current stuff like fresh food, bread, fish, uh, some pots, uh, a garment hanging in the one doorway. Uh, there's some, a basket with some rolls of fabric and, and some grapes and you name it. You can just use your imagination to, to fill that out. Um, we had a lot of personal stuff there and stuff from the church. And uh, as a reminder, if anyone borrows the sets, uh, for their BBS, a lot of those things won't be included because they belong to people at the church. Uh, but the set itself obviously will be. The, all the different artifacts that you see, most of which we created in one fashion or another. We had some plastic pots that moms came in last fall. I just used a saber, saber saw and cut pieces out of them to make them look like they were broken. We broke some clay dollar pots from Lowe's or Home Depot to make them look like shards uh, that you might find when you're digging through for artifacts. Um, the same over here, although over here you'll see a lot of things. There are different kinds of bottles uh, that you take a bottle and you take little pieces of uh, masking tape, not big strips, but little bitty pieces, maybe an inch or so long, and cover the bottle. This is a, like Gatorade or something. You cover it with the masking tape. That gives it the texture because you get all the creases and the wrinkles in the tape. Mm -hmm. This is painted with a, a spray paint uh, that's a stone-like look spray paint that you can find at, at Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards. Uh, some of these, this is actually a quart paint can with a solo cup stuck down in it. And then you put the tape on there and then we actually used uh, wood uh, stain. stain, I want to say dye, uh, wood stain <laughs> to cover it. Still is slightly tacky, but, but, it, but it's going to dry. Uh, this is a chocolate milk bottle, quart size. This is a Cool Whip container, a rubber ball, another Cool Whip container, and then two solo cups. So, it looks like a great base, doesn't it? Isn't that amazing? Um, this is a like a quart bleach bottle or whatever it might be, again with a, uh, yeah, I got one, with a solo cup on top. Solo cups come in really handy. Cover it with tape. Here, this one is a, a QT 32 ounce cup with a solo cup tape to it. Uh, so just use your imagination. I mean, you can do some really, really interesting things. Uh, this is a rubber ball covered in masking tape and painted just to look like an orb or something, they might have dug up and the same. This is a pot, like you would get at the home improvement area, or we had a half a dozen out on our back deck that haven't been filled up yet this spring, so uh, they look kind of dirty. They are, but they would be if they dug them up out of the ground. And then we used a uh, black marker or brown paint and, and made the cracks to make it look like it. So you just have to use your imagination. This was a a tray, uh, it's pretty heavy actually, uh, but we covered it again with masking tape and spray painted paint on it to give it some color, to make it look old and worn out. This, um, this was in one of our props in our, at our church from plays that we do. In the book it describes a way to make what looks like a hologram thing because modern day they would take 
they do take pieces of pottery and then based off of old drawings and paintings and stuff, they try to recreate what it might have looked like. Uh, we didn't build the hologram, but we use that and pretend like that's our hologram, all right? And the same with a lot of the other stuff. Uh, we just, we put that together. There's uh, some pots laying over there in the pit that where we cut some in two and laid them down in the sand. And then there's one that was a, it was actually an old umbrella stand on our patio. Uh, so we kind of cut it up, chipped it up a little bit. Uh, we weren't using it anymore, so turned it upside down and it kind of looks like the base of a pillar or something that, that might have been left after a city was fallen. So imagination, that's, that's the key. Lots of tape, lots of masking tape. <laughs> Lots of masking tape. Sore fingers by the time you get done with all that. Questions? Comments? I just have a comment. When you use the masking tape, if you want to call it for a little while, my 4-H kids, I had them make pencil holes. And you, right. put, and you put the little tape on little pieces, all angles, and then color it with a, a brown shoe polish, and then go back with a black shoe polish and just to give it two tones and stuff. Very good idea. I've also seen people, there was someone at our BBSI, at the BBS Institute, that had done the same thing, and they'd just taken little pieces of crayon so the kids could make their own uh, artifacts and lay them down sideways and rub them on there, like, like you do a rubbing or something, mm -hmm. so you can do that. All right, anything else? <laughs>